Welcome to 10 Minute Type Advice by Personality Hacker. I'm Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. This show features questions from the Personality Hacker community that we answer in about 10 minutes. We've been using personality types in our coaching for years, and we'd love to answer your questions about personal growth through the lens of type. You can find out more about us at personalityhacker.com. Okay, now let's hear today's question. Hey, Joel and Antonia. Just for starters, I just want to mention that I love you guys' videos. I remember that you made a podcast for the ESTJ personality type and gave them a one-word type description, calling them managers at heart. You also gave one-word type descriptions to other types as well. I believe that this would be very beneficial for my personality type, ISFJ, as well as others learning about this type. Again, thank you guys for all that you do, and I wish for your continued success with personality psychology. Thanks, JR, for the question and for the feedback. You want me and Antonia to distill things down to one word? Have you even listened to the podcast? We can't get out of a podcast without what, saying like an hour worth of words. I don't know. Can we do this, Antonia? Is this possible to get things down to one word? I don't think I even had a first word as a baby. I think I had like a first paragraph. <laughs> I don't think I do anything in one word. <laughs> and uh, I've heard that that's part of my magic, but also, uh, you know, I can understand why that's actually, that's just my ego telling me that that's a good thing. I don't think it's a good thing. Well, it depends on who you talk to. Does your family think it's your magic? I don't know. Like your immediate family? Definitely not. Definitely not. All right. So, JR, I understand and appreciate why you would want us to distill each of the types down to a single word, but I do believe that that might be outside of our capacity to do so. But we can pull on other people's genius and have been able to distill types down to a single nucleus name. I, I think a lot of people have actually done this. Yeah. Yeah. Around the internet and put a name on things. And I, I think to some extent we've in some ways kind of avoided it uh, and borrowed from other people's names. Well, what we did is we put one word to describe each of the cognitive functions that would help people understand those more accessibly because that's the building block of personality. So we atomize the information down to the function level. Yes. And so our one word description goes to, down to the function, but the type it was a little more tough, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to give you, JR, one word names that I, we, I think we've in the past borrowed from David Kiersey, the person who wrote the book, Please Understand Me. I think he actually gave pretty good names to the types. And then I'm going to go one more step and give you Dr. Dario Nardi's two word names that he assigned to all the types in his book, The Magic Diamond. And he does two names because I think he, well, I mean, I asked him and he said that it fleshes it out a little bit more. So I'm, I'm going to be lazy and borrow from other people's work. Let's replace lazy for well-researched. Mm, yes. Tapped into the OGs of type. So David Kiersey called SP types the artisans. And the names he gave for each of those types for ISFPs was composer. For ISTP, it's crafter. For ESFPs, it's performer. And ESTPs, it was promoter. All the SJ types he called guardians, which I, I like that word actually for SJs. Inspector is the name he gave ISTJs. Protector is what he gave ISFJs. ESFJs are providers and ESTJs are supervisors. He called the NF types idealists and ENFPs are champions. INFJs are counselors, INFPs are healers, and ENFJs are teachers. And then the NT types he called rationals. INTPs he gave the word architect, ENTJs he gave the word, word field marshal, ENTPs are inventors, and INTJs are masterminds. Now, the challenge here is that there's a lot to a personality type. And Kiersey wasn't a big fan of cognitive functions. He more saw things in terms of temperaments. So each of these words, I believe, is a little limiting to just a single flavor of these types. For example, there are different flavors of each of the types. For if you read the works of Socionics or Dario Nardi's most recent work with the four different flavors. And I would say that when you go through that information, words like supervisor for an ESTJ 
doesn't include the creative type of ESTJ, who tends to go into the arts, but always bring a business mind to it. So that ESTJ doesn't want to be a supervisor at all. They want to be more like a performer. So I think one word descriptions can sometimes be limiting. Now, I think Dario's work in Magic Diamond is pretty good because, again, he gives two words, and I think he's really pulling on the cognitive function in order to come up with these descriptions. So his words are for um, the SP types. He calls ESTPs promoter executors, ESFPs motivator presenters, ISTPs analyzer operators, and ISFPs composer producers. For the SJ types, he calls um, them, oh, well, and the, uh, the SPs he calls improvisers, as well as artisans. SJs are guardians stabilizers, right? That's his word is stabilizer. ESTJs are implementer supervisor, right? So again, you've got the supervisor flavor in there, but it's more about implementation, I think. ESFJs are facilitator caretakers. ISTJs are planner inspectors. ISFJs are protector supporters. If you look at the NFs, he also borrows the word idealist from Kiersey, but adds catalyst as his word. ENFJs are envisioner mentors. ENFPs are discoverer advocates. INFPs are harmonizer clarifier. And INFJs are foreseer developer. And then the NTs are rational theorists. He calls them theorists. ENTJs are strategist mobilizers. ENTPs are explorer inventors. INTPs are designer theorizers. And INTJs are conceptualizer directors. So the nice thing about pairing things down to a single word or a couple words is it really gives you this quick idea of something. It's an encapsulation. So I understand why there's a desire for it. The challenge is also, I mean, you can't take in the entire picture with just a single word, right? So I tend to not really want to apply single words to types because I feel like it, I feel like it sometimes causes people to not identify their type as much. Like for me, I have ENTP preferences and inventor never quite struck me, even though I understand why as a person who leads with extroverted intuition and has introverted thinking and likes inventive things and has a tendency to pursue novelty in a way that's also related to technology in some way. I think I took it when I was young too literally. I thought of that, you know, that archetypal Doc Brown ENTP look. And that was a person who was a literal inventor. Whereas I tend to be more creative or inventive. And I don't really, you know, I don't, noodle around and monkey about with physical technologies as much. I have a tendency to want to take theoretical models and concepts and get inventive with those and see how those can create new, you know, new ways of seeing things. So one could argue that that's inventive, and but I would not call myself an inventor. And so because of that, it took me a little longer to figure out my type when I was young, since that one word didn't really land with me personally. So I think the reason why I shy away from one word or two word descriptions is I want to make sure that people can still find their best fit type, even if they don't identify with like an ultimate archetype, because I don't think these are nucleus descriptions. When we gave one word descriptions or nicknames to the cognitive functions, we were trying to find the nucleus of something. And if you get the center of it, then all of the other characteristics and traits sort of they, they emanate from around that nucleus. They, it's understandable how those traits would come from that, that sort of center desire or center, you know, element of the function. But I don't think you can do that with people, right? You can do that with a function almost illustratively, but it's hard to do that with individuals because we experience those, those elements so differently. And we have just too many, too much complexity running in our life. So, um, so I, I, I like them. Conceptually, I like how easy it is to talk about those single words, but at the same time, I don't like it because I don't want to throw anybody off. <laughs> if an ESTJ is like, I'm not a supervisor, I must not be an ESTJ. And it's like, no, 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 you can totally be an ESTJ. And they're, you're going to see the word supervisor all over the place. And, and that doesn't mean you have to identify with that word. Thanks, JR, for the question. You can ask your own question about personality types or personal growth 
visit personalityhacker.com forward slash questions. We also have programs designed to help you with your personal growth through the lens of personality types. Again, visit personalityhacker.com and find the program that's made just for you. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. Thank you for listening to 10-Minute Type Advice by Personality Hacker. We'll talk with you on the next episode. If you're focused on personal growth, I think you'll resonate with our core content over at personalityhacker.com. We want to see you understand how your mind is wired so you can generate motivation, improve social skills, find career opportunities, and master excellent decision making. But a quick warning, we are advice and action focused in all of our articles, podcasts, and videos. This means that we attract people who like to be challenged to become excellent, to take action, to put in the work to optimize themselves, not simply just gather more information. If you are committed to personal growth and ready to radically find your inner truth, then come over and be a part of our growing community of like minds at Personality Hacker.